Hello, I'm Joseph Coilo, author of Poems Aloud, illustrated by Daniel Gray Barnett. There are loads of poems in this book that have all been designed to be read aloud. I hope you enjoy some of these poems and maybe you'll get some ideas to write your own poems that you can read aloud. I'm going to share a tongue twister from this book. This book has loads of poems with lots of different ways for you to perform them. Tongue twisters are great for getting your mouth and your tongue all warmed up and ready to perform. See if you can say the lines of this tongue twister after me. Try twisting your tongue. Then tuning your teeth. Try taking your tonsils from a tummy tickling thief. Try tasting your tears. Then trumpeting your toes. Try taping your temper to the tip of your nose. How did you do? I'm going to share this poem called To the Countryside. And the performance technique for this poem is called diminuendo. That means getting quieter and quieter and quieter. As I read the poem, I hope that you at home can join me with the beep beep beeps and the clunk clunk clunks and the huff huff huffs and the wee 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 and the swish swish swish. Now listen to how loud I am at those points. You'll see my finger come up so you'll know what to say and when to say it. So let's have fun reading to the countryside. The beeping of the traffic. Beep, beep, beep. Roars in our ears. The belching of the factories. Clunk, clunk, clunk. Shudders in our ears. The huffing of the people. Huff, huff, huff. Mumbles in our ears as we leave the roaring, shuddering, mumbling city behind us. The whiz of the motorway cars, meow, 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 hums in our ears. The whoosh of crops in the field, swish, 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 plays in our ears. The pebble roll of the sea on the shore hushes in our ears as we play the hum of hushes, of noise no more, noise no more, noise no more, in the countryside. This poem, Turn the Radio Up, uses a performance technique called crescendo. That means it starts really quietly and gets louder and louder and louder. I'm going to read it to you now. Tiny click of the volume knob to turn the radio on. A hiss of whispered static, I can hardly hear my song. So I readjust the tuning until my song's a little clearer. It's just above a whisper so I move a little nearer. The clicking of the volume knob turns my song into a shout. The thrumming of the bass I can easily make out. Twang, 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 so I click a little louder until my song becomes a riot. The drums vibrating through my body and my body really likes it. Boom, boom, boom. Now come the vocals, and I really love this bit. So I click up the treble, this is the real deal, and now my song is singing, voice a booming mass of sound. I start to join in, I imagine I'm roaring to a crowd. I'm screaming down a microphone, I am the ocean's throat. I'm clapping out the rhythm, I'm a banging with my boot, I'm bellowing the low bit, I make hurricane sound mute. Now the crowd is within me, point... Painting the largest sound you've ever seen. A wall of ear-splitting symphony, a vocal Godzilla scene. We are a screeching melody, thumping reverberations. We are louder than crashing planets. We are the thunderous cry of constellations. Did you enjoy that? I got louder and louder and louder. Because that is what makes a crescendo. This poem has been designed, has been written to be read slowly. It's called This Bear. This lumbering bear is old. This lumbering bumbling bear has shuffled over rugged imagined mountains, urged his bulk slow and strong, slow as geography, strong as tree growth, through the forests of his mind. This hulking brown bear, furred in shagpile, cloaked in dusty winter coats, 
sways to the tune of the camera flash, eyebrows worn smooth, his back is bald from sitting. This ungainly bear takes two dreamy steps from a cage bathed in decades of eyebrow fur, rusted with blood specks. He swaddles out to the first deep earth beneath his paws, the first thick wind through his thick fur, as his seasoned desires of water and wood and grass and stone roll out the colour of his imaginings, this heavy bear, this happy bear, this home bear, sighs out to freedom. That poem was inspired by a news uh, article I read about a bear that had been kept in captivity for most of its life, but was finally, thankfully, released to the wild. So it has a happy ending. This poem was written with comedy in mind, written to be funny. It's called Funny Fish. I live in the sea, I'm as sweet as can be, I'm a tiny little clownfish, but please don't stare at me. I'm tiny and pretty, colours all around my body. A beautiful little clownfish, living by a sea and an enemy. I have no enemies, I'm dressed to please, you see. A wonderfully fashionable clownfish, with a flair for modesty. Here comes one to admire me, a handsome princely fishy, who appreciates a pretty clownfish. What has he got for me? His smile is so deadly, a handsome catch for me, just a modest pretty clownfish by her sea and enemy. He wants to speak to me, his lips part so slowly. I am a giddy pretty clownfish, what will he say to me? Please swim to me, I find you're an enemy so stingy. Delicious little clownfish, I am not your enemy. I feel a little silly. Swimming to this handsome beastie, but he loves this little clownfish. I'm a stripy beauty. My little fish finger, swim closer to me. My darling fish cake, from the bottom of the sea. My scrumptious little clownfish, you are the one for dinner. Get into my tummy, I want you for my tea. Vain glorious little clownfish, you're the treat for me. I hope that poem brought a smile to your face. <laughs> Poor little clownfish. I'm sure she got spat out afterwards though. On this page, there are lots of animal poems. And I wrote these poems with these animals in mind because these animals are all very different. And so you can make up your own voices. I'm gonna read you the poem for Lion. And I'm gonna try and do it in a lion voice, in the kind of voice I imagine a lion to have. I am meat liquor, bone cruncher, big meower. I catwalk with pride. My mane is a hairdo of envy. My roar is a rumble of mountains. My claws, a savannah of pain. Maybe you can pause the video and try reading frog or ant or sparrow in a frog voice in an ant voice in a sparrow voice good luck this page has several poems all of which have been written with different emotions in mind and the idea is that you read these poems in the voice of that emotion i'm going to give you an example i'm going to read this poem for sadness i'm going to read it in a sad voice. When I'm sad, it feels like the sky is crashing down, like the oceans are rising, and the ground is swallowing me up. All is dark and cold. So that was sadness. I'll try nervous next. Uh, uh, when I'm uh, nervous, it feels like my heart is going to lightning strike out of my chest. Uh, 
Like my skin is raining. Like my belly is a mudslide. It can be quite fun to think of emotions when you're reading poems. Why don't you pause the video now and try reading these different poems in the emotions. This one's for happy, this one's for angry, and this one's for excited. Try reading these poems in those voices. Good luck. I hope you enjoyed the poems from Poems Aloud. Did you read your poems aloud? Did you read them to your friends or family? If not, why not? Get out there and shout your poems to the world.